What are the top 10 fell races for beginners? How do you maintain stamina for regular trail races? How do you cure plantar fasciitis? Find out in my Q&A series, answering all your trail and ultra running questions. Hello, I'm Claire and you're watching Wild Ginger Running, the trail and ultra running advice and inspiration channel. Thank you all for subscribing and thank you to everyone who shares and retweets my films on their social media. So thanks this week go to Justine J, Richard Sagar, Glynn, Outside Shots, David Haygarth, David Cooper, Stephen Whiston, Richard Howard, John Roe Reagan, Run Simon Run, Adrian Stott, Noodles and Fizz, Conrad Anderson and Rachel Patricia. Keep sharing my films everyone and keep your questions coming, whether it's a query about gear or training or nutrition or racing, type it in the comments below so I can help you out. Now let's answer that first question. Question number one, Robin Townsend wants recommendations for beginner fell races. So for those who aren't familiar with the term fell race, fell doesn't mean falling over here, it means mountain or high moorland, especially in northern England. Fell running is more hardcore than trail running, as it involves pegging it to the top of a mountain or several mountains via the fastest route possible, not necessarily on paths. You need good navigation and outdoor skills as the route isn't usually waymarked. So if you've been running on trails for a while and fancy upping the challenge, here are some great suggestions from the folks in the UK Fell Running Facebook group. They actually suggested about 100 races, but I've whittled them down to a top 10 here for you. Number one, Nick Cook suggests the Kinder Downfall. That was his first fell race. Number two, for Scotland, Ross Brannigan suggests any from the Bog and Burn race series as good starters. Number three, Nadim Bayati says the Trunce is the park run of fell races. I think that he means that that means it's easy. Ian Moody agrees, saying it has everything that you want, including three stream crossings, technical wooded sections, and it starts and finishes in a pub. If you need any more persuasion, you can sometimes spot the legend that is Nikki Spinks helping out too. If you don't know who Nikki Spinks is, then check out this interview here. Number four, Loxley Crawshaw says, if you're ever near the peaks, then try the Gritstone series. It's not a great deal of experience needed, but good, tough outing for a first timer. Number five, Ricky Parrish has gone for the Wharfdale Harriers races in Howarth. His first fell race was the Blackshaw Head in the Calder Valley, which was a great beginner one. Number six, Christopher Roberts suggests the cake race in Saddleworth, which is an interesting moorland course with as much cake as you care to eat at the end as part of the cake competition. So if you bring a cake, you get your entry fee back, which sounds amazing to me. Number seven, Lucas Jones says, definitely the Wally Waltz, a brilliant carnival race with a one steady climb, one stunning descent and a river jump or splash to finish. Number eight, Carmen Phillips says the Priscelli Beast in South Wales, of course. It gets you to explore a lovely part of the country and there's three distances to choose from, loads of enthusiastic marshals and supporters, fantastic atmosphere, nice little goodie bag and a lush bowl of call. That's a delicious Welsh, shoot, Welsh soup or broth and uh, a table moaning under the weight of all the cakes at the end. So number nine, Christopher Beatty suggests the Charlesworth Chase. It's short with great views and entry includes a pint that you must drink before crossing the finish line, then soup afterwards. What's not to like? Number 10, finally, Lindsay Oldfield says, any of the wooden tops races. There's no way you'll get lost. There's a great atmosphere. There's nothing too difficult, but there's plenty of mud and it's a great introduction to the fells. The final message comes from Tim Jones, who says, just pick one that suits your ability and go for it. There always seems to be plenty of friendly people in fell or mountain races to make you feel welcome. I hope that's given you some good ideas for your first fell race, Robin, but there are also hundreds more fantastic ones across the country. Look at fellrunner.org.uk slash races for one near you, and let me know which one you're gonna do next in the comments below. Pete is doing a series of 14 to 17 K trail races this autumn, one each month for four months. This is a long distance for him as he only started running recently, so he wants to know how to maintain his stamina throughout. Who better to answer this question for us than the incredible Damien Hall of UTMB fifth place fame last summer. Watch his inspiring UTMB journey in the film Underdog by Summit Fever Media via the Real House website now. Fresh from the Canyons Endurance Run 100K this April, Damien has four top tips for you, Pete, to make your multiple long distance races a success. One, include a weekly strength training session of 15 to 30 minutes to boost your leg power, improve coordination and core stability and whole body endurance. 
too. Eat nutritious foods with a wide range of fruit and veg with high protein and carb snack after hard training and racing sessions to improve recovery times and in turn boost your stamina. Three, go easy in the weeks before and after the race where you reduce the volume and intensity of your training and then have a medium and then a hard week for the two weeks in between. Number four, pace yourself during each race. Start steady and only speed up in the second half of the race. This will do wonders for your stamina as it is so easy to go out fast and run out of steam in longer races. Damien says, good luck, enjoy it Pete. Follow Damien on his social media this year as he runs the 105 mile Ultra Tour de Monte Rosa this September and hosts ultra coaching and running technique courses with Shane Benzi throughout the summer. And for more ultra running and UTMB tips from Damien, check out my latest interview with him here. Question three, Stephen Gordon wants to know if I've ever done a film on plantar fasciitis and arthritis in his feet as he has both. That's bad news, Stephen. I hope it's not too painful for you right now. I haven't done any films on arthritis, but I know a fraction of how you feel as I've suffered from plantar fasciitis on and off for a few years now. I use a lot of advice from Paula Radcliffe and Steve Cram's physio, Paul Hobra. So I recommend following his 10 point plantar fasciitis plan. And if that still doesn't work, you might benefit from shockwave therapy treatment. I did a session of this with Paul before my Cape Breath Ultra race in this film here. It sorted me out for the four days that I was racing, then wearing flat sandals on my blistered and swollen feet on day five made it flare up again. Based on my experience of what eased my plantar fasciitis, I would recommend dropping your running mileage and cross training. I run no more than three times a week at the moment, plus cycle and swim when you can fit it in. Do yoga every day and a strength session like um, this 15 minute hit session here once a week. I also found it's less likely to flare up when I wear higher drop shoes, so that's shoes with a bigger heel pad like road shoes. My problem started when I moved quickly to zero drop minimal cushioning bare, barefoot style shoes in 2015. So my biggest tip is that once you feel like you're managing your planter, only gradually increase things and the moment you feel it coming back, ease off again, cross train, do pulls exercises, then start to come back even more gradually next time. I hope that helps you. Quick fire questions. AB Runs asks if buffs like my wild ginger running one here can be classed as a hat in the minimum kit requirements for hill or fell racing. So the people in the Fell Running UK Facebook group said that sometimes it is allowed and sometimes it's not. It varies from race to race. So read all the race info carefully. And if it still isn't clear, I'd take a hat just to be on the safe side or ask the race organizer to clarify and update the race info so they don't get bothered with the same question again. But judging from the comments on this thread, rather than just packing what's on the mandatory kit list for each race you should really be considering taking what will keep you warm and safe from hypothermia on a cold wet mountainside should you be unfortunate enough to be forced to stop and wait for a rescue. Randy Cafaro wants to know if anyone knows of running vests that are large enough for a 48 inch chest as Salomon, Nathan, Innovate and Ultimate Direction all seem to think that XL is no larger than 44 inches. So does anyone know of any more packs that suit larger runners? Um, in a previous film I covered the potential of running packs with side adjustment straps rather than the waistcoat style vests like the Camelback Octane 9 and the Orange Mudge range. You could retrofit longer elastic across the chest to ease the pressure um, off a tight pack there and Florian Kay also replied recommending the North Face Flight Trail Vest which goes up to an XXL for a 49 to 52 inch chest. Out of stock at the moment which does suggest that more brands should maybe consider making some larger sizes but hopefully that option will help you out there Randy. Little Old Man Running wants to know if the Stour Valley Path 100k in August is a good race. So I put it to you guys on Twitter. Secret Marathon said she did the 50k last year and it was one of the best races she has ever done. Well organised, aid stations are off the chart. Nicholas Towell said it's a great race, a well organised, beautiful course. Um, it did make him realise that Suffolk wasn't flat though. <laughs> F. Woe says he's never run the full 100 but he's marshalled four times at different spots along the course and he has overwhelmingly seen happy runners. Um, local clubs support their runners at aid stations so they often feel like little parties too, that sounds really good. Chris Randall says it's a flat, beautiful, easy route to follow, well run with a great t-shirt, but the cutoffs aren't the easiest compared to other races. Peaks Princess Kate says it's her local race and a great one too. Tom Atkinson says he ran it last year and it's his favorite ever event and he will be back to run it again without a doubt. Team Monkey says she highly recommends it. It's harder than you think, but so pretty and really well supported. The Stour Valley Path 100 organizer also chipped in saying there are way markers with plenty of tape and the, then there's glow sticks towards the end as well. 
So it sounds like you better sign up, little old man running. Let me know how it goes and tag me in your pics on social media so that I can see what it was like. News! A little bit of wild ginger running news this week. I was thrilled to meet three of my fantastic patrons, Rob, Helen and Pascal, at the OM Festival on the first weekend in May. They were doing the OM Light, a two-day navigation event in pairs, finding as many checkpoints as they could around Chacanet Chase. So Pascal was doing it with her 16-year-old nephew, who'd flown in all the way from Belgium to run with his superfit auntie. And Rob and Helen teamed up last minute, and they managed to run a grand total of 20 miles on the Saturday. So Rob only started running in August, so this is an absolutely great achievement for him. And Helen loved the event too, and she now wants to do a navigation course to improve her skills, so go for it, Helen. Well done to all three of them. It was so great to meet some of my lovely supporters. And I'm now really, really looking forward to our exclusive patron meetup at Keswick Mountain Festival even more. If you're already a patron, keep checking the website for um, meetup details, updates, polls, the odd little freebie or sneak preview, and how to get your hands on one of these Ace Wild Ginger Running buffs. Kindly made for us by Om and Buff. If you're not already a patron and you fancy supporting this channel and getting a few nice little perks in return, then do take a look at the website. It's www.patreon.com slash wildgingerrunning. Another exciting thing happened at the Arm Festival too that I really, really want to tell you about. So they hosted the first ever wheelchair trail race. Chris Nicholson and Rob Wood both put their arm power to the test on the stony paths and slippery grass hills of Canic Chase on the Outdoors Magic 10K trail race. So Chris came in first, in first wheelchair, in two hours, five minutes, followed by Rob 14 minutes later. And this is what he said of the course compared to the London Marathon that he'd just completed a couple of weeks prior. Insert interview with Chris here. Yeah, I'd challenge anybody who did the London Marathon to come and do this. It was 10 times harder and yeah, it was unbelievably difficult in comparison to the in comparison to the marathon. So yeah, anybody that did it, please come and do it. See if you can beat the time. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you should have seen them last week. <laughs> yeah, I've got a good medic team, medic team over now. Big up to Chris and Rob. I hope those blisters clear up soon and I'm sure we'll see them and more wheelchair trail racers at next year's OM Festival. Gear, a bit more patron news to start off the gear section this week. So Wild Ginger Running supporter Emily Jacobs has been experimenting with attaching the salmon pole carrying quiver to the back of her advanced skin 12 set pack using some ribbon that she had around the house. She says the poles go in easily and there's no snagging on the mesh of the bag. So that's fantastic, Emily. Has anyone else made adjustments to their packs to make franken packs, as I call them? Tag me in your photos in social media so we can share ideas. We could start using the hashtag franken pack too. I'll leave that one with you. Here at Wild Ginger Running, I've been testing the Raid Light Revolutive packs. So check out the film before this one or Google Raid Light Wild Ginger to see their features. In particular, you might be interested in the front pack option to the Revolutive 12 litre pack. So definitely check that one out. You don't see this kind of thing in many packs and it's definitely worth considering. The week before that, I reviewed the Arm Phantom 12 pack, which promises more stability. So I wasn't convinced during the review as I prefer waistcoat style packs and that if they're the right size, they hug your body really well and they don't bounce or appear to imp impede your natural running action at all. However, a lot of clever physics went into producing the on pack, which I do get, even if it's lost on me personally. Um, so other people with different needs might find this pack works really well for them. So at the on festival, I got one of the designers from Arm to show me exactly how it's designed to work so that you can make up your own mind for yourself. Watch out for that film coming soon on my YouTube channel. It's going to be a bonus film out probably on a Friday. And thank you to the OMS Tom William and Colin Fisher for the design of this pack. I've also been sent some new 1000 mile socks, the run anklet, which are very, very comfy, especially when they're nice and snug on your feet. I'm a size six, but go for the size three to five and a half option as I do like a tight fit to reduce slippage in a sock. And you know how I mentioned using these Cedus heel pads to raise up my low drop shoes in the Ultra Superior 4.0 review last month? Well, I'm now gonna test them out with these Ultimate Gel heel pads from Ultimate Performance as well. 
The CDAS ones are £12 and the Ultimate Performance ones are £8, so I'll let you know which ones I prefer in a future film. Next up for gear testing, I'm going to be taking a look at the LED lenser head torch and I'd like to get the key head torches in for trail running from Petzl and Silver Tested 2 before September comes around again, as I remember that was a big question people kept asking me last autumn. Stay tuned for all these gear tests and if you're looking for more reviews, Google your product plus Wild Ginger and if I've reviewed it, my film or blog post should come up in the search. Competition! This month's exclusive patron competition will give the lucky winner a chance to win £200 worth of Montaigne kit, £130 worth of male or female summer trail running gear from CMP, a £20 hydro flask and entries worth £125 for the National Trust Southwest Outdoor Festival this September, bringing the grand total to £475 worth of trail running goodies. Take a look at my patron page to find out how you can be in with a chance to win. It's question time. So last time I asked you, what is your dream race? And Michael Rocco says, he, if he's dreaming really big, it's the Western States. That would be amazing, Michael. Keep on running and let us know when you've got an entry for your dream race. So this week's question is still to do with races. What is your all time favorite item of gear to run a trail race with? Let me know in the comments below and keep those trail and ultra running questions coming so I can answer as many as possible in the next Q&A. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any new videos from Wild Ginger Running. Thank you for watching. Thanks to all my incredible patrons. Have fun, enjoy your run, and I'll see you on the trails.